Hi, I'm Marty Triola, and today I'm here to discuss sampling distributions and estimators. Uh, we're, we're about to take a long journey, an interesting journey, into topics of inferential statistics. The two major topics of inferential statistics are estimating population parameters and hypothesis testing. With estimating population parameters, we do activities such as conduct surveys, uh, try to determine the percentage of people that are watching 60 Minutes, try to determine the proportion of voters that would favor the Democratic candidate for the presidency. Uh, a really important aspect of statistics, estimating parameters. This section, this segment, is really designed to lay some important groundwork for determining what statistics make good estimators. Now, in this section, we're going to discuss sampling with replacement. Now, in reality, uh, sampling is typically done without replacement. When Gallup goes out and conducts a survey of uh, 1,000 or 2,000 people, or when Nielsen uh, conducts television surveys of people in terms of their viewing habits. Uh, th those people that are selected are selected without replacement. In manufacturing, when items are selected from the assembly line and tested for quality, they're selected without replacement. But our focus throughout, not this just this segment, but throughout the remainder of the course will be pretty much sampling with replacement. The reason for that, two reasons really, when you select small samples from large populations, uh, you can consider them to be effectively independent. You could sample with replacement or without replacement, then it's not going to make much of a difference at all. Uh, and in working with sampling with replacement, we have independent events. Independent events result in easier formulas later on in the course, something that we would all be grateful for. Let's consider the sampling distribution of the mean. What do we mean by a sampling distribution? Well, as a definition, the sampling distribution of the mean is the probability distribution of sample means where all samples are of the same size. This is sort of an abstract concept. We want to make it understandable and concrete. So let's look at something more specific. In considering the sampling distribution of the mean, Let's talk about a small population consisting of only three items, the numbers 1, 2, and 5. That's our complete population. Now, realistically, in statistics, we never care about populations this small. But just for the purpose of understanding some of these concepts, we're going to consider 1, 2, and 5. And I'm going to select simple random samples, simple random samples of size n equals 2. And if I sample with replacement, the samples I get could be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 5, or 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 5. Okay, so here we have a total of nine individual samples. Here I've listed the nine samples out. And for each of the nine samples, we've calculated the mean. The sample consisting of 1, 1 has a mean, obviously, of 1. If I take 1 plus 2, 3, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, and so forth. These are the means coming from those samples. Now we have the probabilities. Each of the nine samples is equally likely, so each has probability 1 ninth. What's a probability distribution from the previous chapter? It consists of values of a random variable along with probabilities. And that's precisely what we have here. And because these are means, we could talk about the sampling distribution of the mean. Now, what do we know about this particular sampling distribution? Well, one important property would be what does it center about? Uh, remember earlier we've talked about important characteristics of data, center, variation, distribution, and possibly outliers and time. CVDOT, we've talked about a mnemonic to remember that. 
computer viruses destroy or terminate to remind us that we should look at the center, the distribution, uh, the variation, are there any outliers, and does the population change over time. Here, let's just focus on the concept of the mean of this probability distribution. How do I calculate that? Well, because all of the values are equally likely, one shortcut would be to simply add these up and divide by 9. I could use the same formulas we've developed earlier. That'll work as well. But if I add these up, let's see, 2.5, 5.5, uh, 7, 9, 12.5, 15.5, 19, 24. The sum is 24. There are nine of them. So if I take 24 and divide by 9, uh, that's equivalent to 8 divided by 3, or 2.7. The mean here is 2.7. Mu is 2.7. Now, if I go back and look at the original population, 1, 2, and 5, that population has a mean of 2.7. And not too coincidentally, the mean of the sampling distribution of means is 2.7 as well. That's good. That's terrific. That's a nice property for a statistic like XBAR to have, the fact that it targets the population value. Okay, the probability distribution has a mean that's the same as the mean of the original population. Therefore, sample means target the population mean. They're not biased. They don't systematically tend to underestimate the mean or overestimate it. So the mean is therefore a good estimator because of this property that it targets the population value. Now let's look at the median. Let's consider the median. Again, let's take a population consisting of just three numbers, 1, 2, and 5. And again, I could list the nine samples out, 1, 1, 1, 2, and so forth. OK, I've done that here. Here we have the nine samples. Here we have the nine medians. Okay. Now, if I look at this probability distribution for the median, uh, again, I could add these up, divide by 9, because they're all equally likely. They're all going to occur the same number of times. Uh, 2.5, 5.5, 7, 9, 12.5, 15.5, 19, 24. 24 divided by 9, 2.7. Here, the median gives me 2.7. But what's the median of the original population? Well, put these in order. 1, 2, 5. For the median, you look in the middle. And the median is 2. Okay, the median of the original population is 2, but the probability distribution, the sampling distribution of the median, targets at 2.7. That's bad. The median then does not target the population median. Therefore, the median is not a good estimator. I could think of other approaches. I could just take these values, these nine median values. I could put them in order. Uh, and again, that won't work. Let's look at proportions. Again, let's take the population 1, 2, 5. But this time, we're going to look at the quality of being an odd number. So for the original population, 1, 2, 5, we have uh, two odd numbers. So 2 thirds is the value of the population proportion. Okay. Now again, let's look at a sampling distribution of proportions by collecting samples of size 2. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, and so forth. The roll listed over here. Now in the first case, uh, my sample consists of two odd numbers out of two, so the proportion is one. Here, out of the two items in the sample, one of them is odd, so I get a 0.5 for the proportion of odd numbers. And continuing on down, I get a probability distribution for proportions of odds. Now, what happens here if we calculate the mean? Again, I could calculate the mean of a probability distribution like I did earlier. But a shortcut would be to add these up, divide by 9, 
1, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4.5, 5, 6. 6 divided by 9 gives me 2 thirds. And if I go back to the population, the population parameter had a proportion of 2 thirds as well. That's good. The proportion targets the population value. So, which estimators are good and which are not so good? Uh, we've established that the mean is good because it targets the population mean. We didn't talk about variance, but if I did go through and do a similar example for the variance, we would find that, yes, the sample variances do target the population variance, and proportions target the population proportion. So they're all good estimators. Standard deviation does not target the population standard deviation, but the bias is small for large samples, small enough so that it's a fairly common practice to go ahead and use the standard deviation as a workable estimator. So under good estimators, we might go back, and even though it's not actually technically truly official, we might write in standard deviation because of that property. Bad estimators would be uh, statistics like the median and range. So for my good estimators, we have mean, variance, proportion, standard deviation. Throughout the remainder of the course, we're going to be focusing on these particular statistics as estimators. When we look at making inferences about populations based on samples, we're going to be looking at specifically means, standard deviations and variances, and proportions. And uh, we could see now why that's true. We could see what it means for a statistic to be a good estimator. Basically, it targets the population parameter. So that concludes this section, and uh, see you next time.